We are back on The Spin Room. Thanks for staying with us. It's time for our weekly segment, Mideast Crossfire, where we discuss one of the burning issues in our region. Today, we'll discuss the decision of the Trump administration to cut over $200 million in aid to Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Will this bring the sides any closer? What effect will playing hardball with the Palestinians have in the long run? Joining me in studio today are former Palestinian Authority Minister of Detainees and Ex-Detainees Affairs, Ashraf al Adrami and senior fellow at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, Dan Diker. It's good to see you both. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. How do you think? I mean, is this financial pressure going to bring the sides closer? Is it going to, going to make this the peace negotiations, jumpstart the negotiations? What's, is it it's just going to make things worse, isn't it? I mean, there's an historical moment we're witnessing right now, and that is that the Palestinian Authority made the politically suicidal decision to boycott, to BDS the United States government. The largest benefactor of, uh, of, of, uh, of U.S., uh, of international largesse and financial aid to the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian leadership boycotts the United States. There cannot be a more politically, diplomatically, I can't put it any, way, any other way, but say stupid decision on behalf of the Palestinian people who are suffering uh, from the, will suffer from the reduction in American aid. But when, you, when, but when you smack your largest benefactor in the face, your largest benefactor is going to say, okay, then, you know, do it but on your it own. Does it help, Dan, to cut? I mean, this, this is money that's supposed to go to educational programs, to health programs. How does that help? It's like collective the, uh, punishment. Mommy, the, the U.S. administration under President Trump has basically unmasked the Palestinian Authority, which former American governments have refused to do. The game is over. You cannot be a Palestinian so Authority of leadership. Punish the you, people? You can't, no, punish the responsible Palestinian leadership that has incited to terror, pays to slay, pays, pays blood money to what they call prisoners of war, what the rest of the world call, calls convicted okay. terrorists, and well, they I, incite I, to murder of, of Israeli children. If, as Minister Azrami knows, the Palestinian Authority wants to turn in to a bona fide, free, democratic, Palestinian, sovereign entity, they have a choice to make. Okay, let's they, either, they either play the democratic game and help the Palestinian people, or they continue to be a terror-supporting entity that engages in mukawama in Asha, struggle. Asha. I, I think that the American administration knows that the Palestinian uh, authority uh, doesn't spend the, these money on uh, prisoners or uh, martyrs' families. Right. Right. It is obvious. We uh, cleared it enough for the mm -hmm. Americans. Now, I think the American administration punishes the Palestinian people and it leads to violence. I mean, I live in the West Bank. I live in Judea and Samaria. I work there, I, and I have, I have scores of Palestinian friends in neighboring villages and towns. I speak with them. We have conversations, and they are furious with the Palestinian Authority leadership. They want to be connected to Israel. They want economic normalization with Israel. I'll remind us that this week, hundreds of Palestinian workers, very good men and women from the Palestinian areas, are getting $18,000, Minister, 18,000, excuse me, 18,000 shekels per person because of their success in working with the SodaStream company that is today based in the Negev, which uh, in which uh, several hundred Palestinians actually travel. You didn't answer travel. my question. The, it, the that point the, is, it's not security. economic. Economic deprivation brings violence against the Palestinian Authority, not against Israel. Today in Area C, okay, today in Area C, you have thirty thousand Palestinians working in the in the in the industrial okay, zones, okay. and they're happy, they're well paid, okay. and that's the future for the West Bank. The security, the uh, the Israeli security establishment, the Israeli security establishment has also said. Yes. that when the United States government under President Trump recognized Jerusalem that the entire Middle East would explode. What happened, Ami? Nothing happened. In fact, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan are, are furious not with Israel, but they're furious with the Palestinian Authority because they refuse to play ball with the U.S. administration and come to the peace table and talk okay. long-term peace well, with I'll their Israeli neighbors. Sir, your people have 
a crucial decision to make. Do you want to continue to be a terror-sponsoring PLO organization, Muqawama, or do you want to be a modern, liberal, free, democratic, sovereign entity? You have the choice to make. We the President of the United States is putting you, is, is offering you a Marshall Plan. He's offering you a Marshall Plan. I personally have met with members of his team recently. They want to help the Palestinian people. They want you to have an economy like we Southern want an Ireland. Independent state. And we want dignity. We want our flag. We want our capital. We want our freedom. And after that, the economical situation will be improved. Without this, we cannot accept. But but we don't uh, sponsor the, the terrorism, the Palestinian uh, Authority, you know, the security services fights against the, the, the terrorists. What about the salaries to families No, 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 the salaries for families. We are speaking, if but, you but speak, the, but the, but the if you is speak, that that, you know, that, if you speak about the prisoners, about 800,000 of the Palestinians yes. will be, uh, were arrested by the Israeli authorities. Okay. We are speaking about a huge uh, uh, families, uh, amount of families everywhere. Okay. If you will leave them without paying uh, money for them, Hamas, the Islamic Jihad, Iran, and other... Uh, so the Israelis so are saying, well, we shouldn't have gone and done the terror attack to begin that with, it is, right? it is our interest to keep them under our uh, authority and to give them uh, right. to live in a normal uh, the, conditions. Okay. The, the interest, in, in I, can tell you, I can tell you authoritatively, the Palestinian people, the good people, the Palestinian Authority that work for a living, that leave their homes and want to earn livings, that want to send their children to schools and universities, they want to work with Israel, they want economic normalization today. And what the Palestinian leadership has done, much to their detriment, is to maintain incitement to murder in school books, in 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 mosques, it's in the public true, discourse, and they and they don't. I'm not no, saying no, 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 I'm not no, saying no. Minister Ashri himself because he has been a no, more no, moderate no, voice. No. But you have a crucial no, decision no, to even, make. Even if you speak about educational books, it is not true. I was no asked by this. There is books? no any kind of incitement in our educational okay. books. Ashraf, I mean, wanna... 25 years ago. Yasser Arafat and Yitzhak Rabin shook hands on the lawn of the White House. The world uh, applauded that and hoped and expected that, that one of the first things that the Palestinian, the newly formed Palestinian Authority would do in 1994-1995 is to break down all the refugee camps, build homes for Palestinians, like in places like Ruabi, which use Israeli technology, which use Israeli materials, and resettle all of the people uh, that had been called Palestinian refugees and not leave that issue as a political football mm -hmm. to the final status. I, P, what, what the minister knows very well is that they have lost the Palestinian, the, the the Israeli public consensus, because the Israeli consensus, uh, the vast majority, 95 percent of Israelis, even more, would never accept the so-called return of Palestinian Maybe refugees. There are 50,000 refugees about today, not 5 million, because their, uh, it, their status cannot be inherited. Their economic status, by the way, according to UNRWA, is also uh, unimportant in terms of the amount, the millions of dollars that are, that are issued to Palestinian refugee families. The time for refugees in the Palestinian areas is over. It's called rebuild and move forward. This is what the Trump administration is saying. Israel's been saying it through left-wing governments, right-wing governments, and now is the time for people like Minister Azrami to say to his leadership, we have to take a new and a different tack for peace.